I hope you felt welcome tonight by our Economic Development Director, Brian Rodemaker, and Police Captain Chris Roos. They were our greeters. I'd like to introduce <clears throat> the folks who are sitting up in front of you to my right, your left, uh, Recording Secretary Cassidy Ritz. If you have a card to speak, you need to get it to her as soon as possible. Our City Clerk, Colby Salento. Uh, Commissioner from <coughs> Zone 1, Dwight Selby. Our Deputy Mayor and Zone 2 Commissioner, Troy Kent. To my left and your right, Zone 3 Commissioner, Susan Persis. Zone 4 Commissioner, Rob Littleton. City Manager, Joyce Shanahan. Assistant City Manager, Claire Whitley. City Attorney, Randy Hayes. And for those of you listening online, I'm Mayor Bill Partington. Uh, at this time, I'd ask you to silence your cell phones and please rise for the invocation given by Reverend John J. S. Seelan from Bethel Ministries, and that'll be followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. Let us pray. Father God, we come before your throne of grace with thanksgiving and adoration. Father, your word tells us, behold, a child is born and a son is given. The government shall be upon his shoulders. His name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father. Prince of Peace, of the increase of his government and his peace, there shall be no end. We ask of your wisdom, your counsel, your might, your understanding, your grace, and your righteous guiding upon all these precious leaders that have asked us to come and pray for them, Lord, and pray for our city. We thank you for our city. We thank you for the wonderful city that we live in, Father. We are grateful for the health and the joy and the peace that you've given us. We pray that you'd continue to protect these leaders and bless them and their families and all of our families and surround them with the cords of your love and your mercy and grace that cannot be intruded by any enemy's attack or anything. Uneventful, Father, we submit ourselves to you. We ask you for your grace and your wisdom. And we pray in your precious holy name. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, at this time, uh, we have some new firefighter introductions, and I'll ask Fire Chief Rusty Sievers to make that as introductions. Thank you, Mayor and Commissioners. It is my pleasure to announce uh, two new firefighters that just started today. Uh, to my left is uh, Logan Selman, and my other left, or next to him, is Nick Nates. And let me start with Logan first, give you a little bit of background about <clears throat> him. Uh, Logan was born in Daytona Beach and grew up in Edgewater, New Smyrna Beach area. He attended high school at New Smyrna Beach High School. He completed his fire academy and his emergency <coughs> medical technician at Daytona State College. And after he completes paramedic school, he plans on moving to the Timber Creek area and building a home and a family. His hobbies include being with his family and friends, and he loves the outdoors. Hunting and fishing is something he's done with his dad for as long as he can remember. He's also raised cattle with his dad. Very interesting. And he would like the commission to know that he's extremely grateful for this opportunity and has been a dream of him, his to work in the city of Ormond Beach, and he's honored to be part of a, such a progressive department city and he will he will not let the residents down Logan. Thank you, Logan. and now Nick uh, Nick was born in Pensacola Florida he moved to Ormond Beach in 1998 he attended uh, Seabreeze uh, High School right here locally uh, he attended also the fire Academy and his emergency medical technician in Daytona State College and he will be starting uh, paramedics in the, in the future in the very near future his hobbies include spending time with his girlfriend and their three dogs and exploring nature trails all around Florida. Nick has obtained also his bachelor's degree through Daytona State College. Congratulations on that. And he would like to commission to know it has always been his dream to work for the city of Ormond Beach Fire Department. He is beyond excited to get this chance to serve the citizens and help this great department in, in any way possible. And it is my honor to introduce them to our city and our fire rescue family. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. 
I have to let everyone know that Logan was my student at Indian River Elementary when I was the principal, so I'm very, very proud to see him up here. It just warms my heart. <laughs> Congratulations. Why don't you guys face the audience with the chief there, and we'll get a picture. Something about social media, I don't know. What <laughs> to audience remarks. This time we'll hear from those of you who have signed a card to speak about any item which is not on the printed agenda for this meeting. Uh, the City Commission has adopted a policy of a three minute time limit for each speaker. And uh, if you've completed a sign up card and do not have an opportunity to speak during the allotted time, which is 30 minutes at the beginning of the meeting, uh, you may make your comments at the end of the meeting prior to commission comments pursuant to previously adopted commission rules. And tonight we start with Joe Hanush. <coughs> Good evening. Good evening. Joe Hanush, 87 Carrot Creek Way. I want to talk about term limits for the city commission. I know it was on the ballot you know, about four months ago now. Uh, it passed, however, it won't be implemented because it was tied to another question. I'm asking, you know, if there could be on the 2020 ballot a single issue term limit uh, question on there. Uh, my recommendation would be uh, three two year terms and uh, a partial grandfathering in for the current membership. Um, I think that's fair. Um, it was passed by 62%, so I think it would be a fair thing to do for the voters to do it on there again. Um, and one other thing, a different topic uh, medical marijuana dispensaries. I know it's only. Con to like one zone in uh, Warren Beach right now, B1, I believe. I think the planning board before uh, recommended B8, B9, and B10. If that's, I know we have it in surrounding cities and, and they're doing okay. I haven't heard anything negative going on there with that. Uh, we could try to do it here. Uh, I'd appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thank you, Joe. <clears throat> Next up is Roger Nutt. Good evening. Good evening. Um, I want to speak a few minutes about the septic to sewer conversion which has been promised to us. Homeowners from Ormond by the Sea held an instructional meeting at the Ormond Beach Library on Sunday, October the 13th. Over 100 people attended. During this meeting, 90 people signed a petition to be presented to Ormond Beach City Council requesting Volusia County and the City of Ormond Beach to carry out the necessary scientific work and study to determine whether the Ormond by the Sea septic systems are contributing any pollution to the Halifax River and or the Tomoko Basin. It is our conviction that they are not. Several meeting attendees are canvassing their neighborhoods to obtain additional signatures as we speak, and an online campaign has been started to further increase participation. The signatures will be presented at your next meeting when commissioners will be asked to present their decision. You have a copy of the petition in front of you, or should do, but I'm going to read it out because most people do not. There is increasing evidence that homeowners in the village of Ormond by the Sea may be forced to replace their perfectly satisfactory septic systems by connection to a central sewage system owned by the city of Ormond Beach. It appears that the very substantial costs of this compulsory operation will mainly be borne by the homeowners. The justification being offered for this process is that the Ormond by the Sea septic systems are causing unacceptable pollution of the water in the Halifax River and the adjacent Tomoka Basin. However, there is no evidence that the septic systems in Ormond by the Sea are contributing any pollution to these waterways, and all the available evidence indicates that they are not. The undersigned property owners hereby petition the commissioners of Volusia County and the City of Ormond Beach to undertake the necessary scientific work and study 
to determine whether the septic system is known by the sea are causing substantial and unacceptable pollution of water in the Halifax River or the Tomoka Basin. We also make the reasonable request that the design, conduct, analysis and reporting of this work and study should be accepted, observed and approved by technical representatives of the homeowners. Pending the results of this study, the undersigned property owners also petition that any and all work on the proposal to replace the septic system in Ormond by the sea by the City of Ormond Beach Central Sewerage should be suspended unless and until the completed scientific study proves that the Ormond by the sea septic systems are contributing substantial and unacceptable amounts of pollution to the Halifax River and or the Tomoko Basin waterways. Thank you, Roger. Thank you. Yes, sir. Rashida Hakim. Hi, I'm Rashida Hakim from Ormond by the Sea. Thank you to Commissioner Selby and Joyce Shanahan for attending our event this past Sunday. We appreciate you taking the time to listen to us. Well over 100 concerned citizens came to a septic perspective, eager to learn the results of our research and investigation into Ormond Beach's plan to impose the expansion of their sewer system into Ormond by the Sea and forcing homeowners to pay for the project and pay to connect or face fees and fines. The Ormond Library Auditorium was nearly full because so many people are very worried about this project being forced upon them without a vote or any say, and because the premise for the project, improving the quality of the water of the Halifax, seems to be a thinly veiled pretense for pushing unwanted development onto the area and pricing residents out of their homes. I'm sure people had more pleasant ways they would have preferred to spend three hours on a beautiful Sunday afternoon than listening to talks about sewers and septic systems and how their elected officials and the neighboring city's elected officials want to spend their hard-earned money. But this community cares about the environment and about what they will do if they cannot afford these costs. People are worried they will be forced to leave their homes if they cannot afford to pay. Many are on Social Security or pensions, and even paying the monthly sewer service bill will strain their budgets, so they were willing to give up their time to try to figure out what we can do. I do want to thank the Commission for agreeing to modify the City of Ormond Beach Comprehensive Plan to no longer require that those in Ormond by the Sea agree to petition for annexation in order to get new utility service. Although Florida state statutes still may allow this annexation by utility provider without a vote from residents, we appreciate the gesture of removing it from the plan. Concerns about being forced to be annexed into Ormond Beach set aside for the moment, we remain committed to our environmental concerns and must insist that sampling and testing be done to determine whether our septic systems are having any negative effect on the water quality of the Halifax. With no soil testing or proper scientific investigation to determine the source of nutrient pollution in the Halifax, there can be no justification in forcing this conversion upon us for environmental reasons. Our septic systems have not been determined to be the source of any pollution or contribution of nitrogen and phosphorus into the waterway, and without this evidence, how can we be forced to abandon them for a costly sewer hookup? How can we be expected to tolerate the destruction of our roads and yards and endure the unpleasantness of living in a construction site for months? How can we stand idly by while our beloved neighbors have to pack up and move if they cannot afford the expense? How can we repay the loans we are told will be available, loans that we didn't need or want in the first place? We couldn't answer these questions, of course, or why the city of Ormond Beach is willing to proceed with this project in spite of the absence of data. Can you? Thank you. And Janet Nutt. Good evening. Good evening. My name is Janet Nutt, Ormond by the Sea. Um, I wasn't planning on speaking tonight, but on the way here, I don't know if you've read it or not, but on the internet, the Observer um, published their latest report from the county council meeting this morning, and we now have several councilmen and women who are on our side saying that there does need to be a study. At least one county commissioner or city commissioner here is going around waving this 2013 report as if it was a Bible. It is not. I personally went to the health department and asked about this report. It's a study. It's not a study. It's a report. It was generated to have a group of a panel 
to discuss, well, here's a point, and here's a point, and what do you think, what do you think? But right now, it's being waved around like it's a Bible, and it is not. It's not a study. There's nothing scientific about it. The formula on the front page has nothing to do with science or a study. It's just a group of letters de denoting the, the paragraphs in the report. So while I'm angry and excited because now I know the county council is starting to be in our favor, I'm asking you people, please stop looking at this 2013 report. It's nothing. And you people need to provide our citizens with a scientific report. Instead of spending our money, which I don't have, you need to spend your money to prove to us that we're wrong. And if we're wrong, then we'll stop and go along with you. But if we're right, you need to go along with us. Because this just is not right. I can't have a vote in the city because I live in the county. But I will vote for my representatives in the county because you, people need to listen to us. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Next up is Linda Williams. On behalf of Civil Discourse, thank you for the Civic Engagement Award that Bill Denny and I received. It was a surprise and delight to be recognized for something I love doing. I would also like to recognize four other individuals who've been instrumental in getting civil discourse started and guide and support us. Um, Joe Hanush, Pam Novi, Eric Breitenbach, and Ann Long. Um, on Monday, October the 14th, Katrina Locke, the Sustainability and Natural Resources Director for Volusia County, was our guest, continuing the topic of smart growth with a focus for the month of October on sustainability and development. Ms. Locke explored the Volusia County Sustainability Act accepted by the county in 2014 to participants and took questions and comments regarding this in-depth study and its implications for Volusia County. We appreciated that the city of Ormond Beach was represented by Gabe Mendez, thank you, Gabe, and always welcome city representatives' attendance. It is in its entirety the um, Sustainability Act is a little daunting, so I ask Katrina Locke to give us a three-page summary. Uh, even though it's not binding for the cities, it is a blueprint we can look at and kind of guide us. On Monday, October 28th, Civil Discourse will present a three-person panel on the issue of sustainability and development, which will include a representative from Volusia County and from St. John's Water District and our city engineer, Sean Finley representing the city of Ormond Beach. Ms. Locke will also be present and our focus will be on making, on how the county, city, and St. John's Water District intersects in making possible uh, policy for sustainability and development in Ormond Beach. Um, and how it might or might not reflect the Sustainability Act of 2014. So that's Monday, it's beginning at 5.30 at the library every second and fourth Monday and this should be especially interesting. We'd love any input if any of you come. Thank you. Thank you. And last but not least, Jim Schultz. Jim Schultz, 117 Harvard Drive. Slightly different topic, and I'm going to come in the back door on my old favorite topic, uh, fluoridation. Uh, back in 1928, Edward Bernays wrote a book, Propaganda. It was how to, in a non-direct way, engineer consent. In other words, get agreement, but not on, on an emotional level, not on an intelligent uh, discussion level. But uh, he was the nephew of Sigmund Freud, and he shared many of the papers with uh, Sigmund, and what he also, uh, the 1928 propaganda was also one of the main textbooks that uh, Joseph Goebbels used in the Third Reich uh, for their fantastic propaganda machine. American tobacco after the war, World War II, uh, was having a terrible time getting women to smoke. They, because ladies didn't smoke, 
those other women did. And uh, he thought he could engineer a situation which would make it a symbol of freedom. And so at a parade in New York City, uh, Easter Day Parade, he hired a bunch of rich debutantes to hide cigarettes and march in the parade in a large group. He notified all the newspaper people that uh, there was going to be a demonstration of suffragettes with their torches of freedom. And guess what? It hit the international news. It hit the national news besides New York City. And uh, it broke the ice. And uh, he became a very sought, well, sought person. Well, then came fluoridation. Uh, and the health department knew it was going to be a hard sell because everybody knew sodium fluoride is rat poison, bug poison. You know, and you had it in your house. But you damn well wouldn't give it to your kid. And so he worked the magic for the federal government to engineer consent on these studies they did, because they were going to do 15-year studies. Well, they cut it down to five and then uh, said it was such a great benefit that it was going to, and, you know, the dental fluorosis wasn't that bad, except it was double in blacks, and, well, we're up to, they were going to stop if it got to 10%. They didn't test for any other issues. It's now at 65. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. The uh, minutes have been sent to the commission for review as well as posted to the city's website. These are the October 1st, 2019 regular city commission meeting minutes. Any additions, deletions, or corrections? I just need a voice vote. I move, a, oh, I move, move approval for, uh, for the minutes of the city commission meeting for October 1st, 2019. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed like sign. We'll show those passing unanimously. And we'll move on to the community redevelopment uh, agency item. The following item is a community redevelopment item. The City Commission serves as the community redevelopment agency of the City of Ormond Beach and must review this item and make a recommendation as the CRA. Therefore, we will recess the City Commission meeting and call the CRA meeting to order. And I will open the public hearings on resolution number 2019 185 and ask the secretary to read that by title please resolution number 2019-185 a resolution of the city commission also acting as the community redevelopment agency of the city of ormond beach florida accepting a bid from rj landscape contractors inc for landscape services regarding the landscape renovations project under bid number 2019-15 authorizing the execution of a contract and payment thereof therefore rejecting all other bids and setting forth an effective date. This is resolution number 2019-185, read by title only. Thank you, Madam Secretary. Uh, I don't have any cards on 7A. Is Are there anyone who wishes to discuss this item? I, I have one question. Yes, it, within this, on the agenda, there seems that we're removing a lot of trees. Uh, I have a question for staff. So the trees we're removing, it's basically because of a is it true that it's basically because there is a disease affecting the trees? Sean Finley. Oh, Sean Finley, our city engineer. These are just, there are some disease trees. There's some older trees. A lot of the trees in, these, in this project were ones that were affected by Hurricane Matthew and Irma. So it's just a, it's a lot of cleanup on, on these different projects. Five of them are in the CRA area, and then there's, there's some separate ones that are refinanced or um, paid for through other funds that are outside the CRA area. Anyone else? Just need a motion and a second. Move approved. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed like sign. We'll show that passing unanimously. Uh, we will close the public hearings and reconvene the city commission meeting, and that brings us to the consent agenda. Does anyone wish to pull anything from the consent agenda? Yes, Mr. Mayor. I'd like to uh, pull item H. Anyone else? Move to approve the consent agenda. Uh, absent item H. Second to approve the consent agenda. Absent item H. Colby, uh, if you
you would please call the vote <coughs> on the consent agenda absent item H. Commissioner Kent? Yes. Commissioner Persis? Yes. Commissioner Littleton? Yes. Commissioner Selby? Yes. Mayor Partington? Yes. And that brings us to 8H. Resolution number 2019-195, a resolution authorizing the execution of an interlocal boundary service agreement between Flagler County and the City of Ormond Beach for provision of utility services in the North U.S. Highway 1 Flagler County Utility Service Area and setting forth an effective date. This is resolution number 2019-195, read by title only. Thank you, Colby. I do have some cards on 8H, and we will start with uh, Jeff Sweet. <clears throat> Good, evening. Uh, Good evening, Mr. Mayor, members of the Commission, staff, uh, Jeff Sweet, 595 West Granada Boulevard, uh, attorney for the property owner. Uh, we addressed uh, the Commission recently on this issue. Uh, I'll keep my remarks brief. Property owners are Mr. and Mrs. Baylor, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Page, and Mr. and Mrs. White. Uh, it's a vacant parcel, about 23.4 acres immediately on the Volusia Flagler line. Um, it is, um, has no water and sewer service. And as you can see in the handout, uh, water and sewer service is stubbed in literally uh, on that side of the street, uh, almost to their property line. Uh, hit it with a hardball, as you could say. The um, city uh, of Ormond would be the only pr present uh, entity that could provide the service. Uh, the present plan development uh, is about a 250,000 acre warehouse. Uh, in the original site plan, uh, they had multiple parcels in there, which I had them remove before I brought that to the commission the last time. So on the site plan that you have, it is one, one site. Uh, those other pieces, I don't know who, d who drew that plan. They have no landscape and they don't have enough parking. So they're gonna, they're gonna consume that entire parcel for uh, this uh, situation. 50 to 60 jobs, uh, we believe that a lot of the people that will work there will live in Ormond or Volusia County. That's the closest uh, residential um, that uh, is available. So uh, I know the Commissioner Selby had some comments which we took very seriously. Uh, we contacted uh, the Ormond Crossings owner. Uh, there are three parcels in Ormond Crossings that have US-1 frontage. One is only four acres. The other two would accommodate this site. I was not, um, had not got the client's permission to disclose the purchase price at the last meeting. Our purchase price is $1.4 million, which is what we paid for the property in 2002 or three. Uh, the, the present um, pricing on those parcels is more than double that. So, uh, and then there are two other parcels in the city of Mormon that we found one would suit this purpose. It's under contract now, and actually it's before the city commission. It's where uh, Total Comfort's gonna move their facility. The other piece is only 18 acres. Uh, they want a million uh, eight for it, and that just doesn't fit. So we took those comments seriously. There really isn't any place in that part of the county or the city that would accommodate uh, this development. So we are uh, asking uh, that the commission approve that. The property owner is here and would like to speak. Thank you. Bruce Page. <clears throat> As Jeff mentioned, I'm one of the owners along with my wife and my partner, the Whites and the Baylors. And for those of you that don't know me, I've uh, been a citizen of the Volusia Flagler area and a business person for over 50 years. I grew up in Ormond Beach. I live in Flagler Beach now, but my parents live here. I have plenty of family and friends that have strong ties to Ormond. My heart's in Ormond. So I, I first of all want to thank all of you for your commitment to serve uh, this great community and also uh, for your consideration of this project. I just wanted to look you in the eyes and just let you know from Bruce Page, I would never be involved in a project that would be the, at a detriment of the city of Ormond Beach. It wouldn't happen. I can tell you, speaking for uh, my partners, I know that we feel like this project is, as Jeff mentioned, the majority of the economic impact will actually be the city of Ormond Beach. We felt like that from the very beginning when we bought the property over 15 years ago. 
Uh, looking at the utilities, I, I believe that it's built in structure that the city would make money off of it, which is great. So we want the city to do well off of it. But as a longtime banker, you know, with an economics background, I am absolutely confident that the economic, the most of the economic benefit will be the city of Mormon Beach in Volusia County through direct employment, like Jeff mentioned, but also the spillover effect, the multiplier effect that happens when you have projects like this. I've been involved in economic development my entire career, and I can tell you that this, the rising tide raises all ships. You know, we've heard that statement is applicable in this case. This project, while it be directly located in Flagler, adjacent to the, the uh, of Volusia County and close to the city of Ormond Beach, it will have a positive impact on all the projects around it. This, for instance, where do people, they're going to live, they're going to live in Ormond, pay taxes in Ormond, where are they going to frequent restaurants, do their shopping in Ormond. So there's a lot of indirect economic benefit that this will be provided provide the city. I'm absolutely convinced of it. I know I'm biased, but I've tried to look at, at your uh, positions, and, and I can only imagine that it's a real good project for you to approve, and I just want to thank you in advance for your support of the project and all your efforts with it. Thank you. And Jim White. I will be very brief since you heard what I had to say three weeks ago maybe um, but first of all thank you for your support thank you for your time thank you for all you do for the city of Ormond um, I'm a proud resident as Bruce mentioned for since 1983 anyway um, I think this is a great project for the city of Ormond I, I have personally spoken to the Ormond crossings group we're very been very long friends and partners with them um, the comment that I received they feel the same way this is something that will help the city of Ormond Beach. We're not taking any business away from the city of Ormond Beach. Um, it'll, in fact, be revenue for the city with utility service that's already there. Um, I think it also helps to have a partnership with Flagler. Um, I'm a big proponent of what happens in the US-1 corridor. Um, I've personally been involved with, with this property for a long time, watching what happens there. And I think we are right on the cusp of a lot of great things that are gonna really improve that corridor and make it a lot nicer area for the businesses that are there and for all of us. And I think this can be part of that and I, and I appreciate your help and support. Thank you. Thank you. I don't have any other cards. Is there a motion and a second for 8H? I move to approve resolution number 2019-195. Second. Any discussion? Commissioner Selby. Yeah. I'll in light of the uh, vote at the last meeting of 4-1, uh, I'll be try to be as brief as I can. Um, first of all, I just want to say that I have uh, I have met and, and discussed this project um, with uh, two of the property owners, uh, Mr. White and uh, Mr. Page, and uh, I also received a letter from their counsel, uh, Mr. Sweet, um, a very informative letter um, in response to my comments at, the, at our last commission meeting. Um, I also, uh, after our last meeting, I met, I uh, received, uh, or we all received, a, an email from uh, Helga Van Eckert, who is the Economic Development Director for Flagler County. And um, I reached out to her and had a meeting with her to discuss this project. Um, and um, uh, I, one of the questions I asked her was, I said, uh, Ms. Van Ecker, what is your vision for this section of US-1 in Flagler County? And she said, I want to see the whole thing developed out. And um, my concern with that is precisely what I raised at our last meeting, that, um, that this, this land in Flagler County, because it does not have water and sewer, is effectively undevelopable land. It's virtually impossible to develop this land. So without our utilities, it cannot, effectively cannot be developed. There's very limited things that can be done on that. In our write-up, it says that um, uh, Flagler County can't provide utilities. I, I really would prefer to say they, have, they won't provide utilities. They could provide utilities, just a long way to go. Very expensive to get utilities there. And my concern is, um, irrespective of this one individual project, 
Um, my concern is that that we can, you know, our state law would allow us to go five miles outside of our boundary with utilities, okay, into Flagler County. And honestly, I think ultimately we will be pressed to do that. I don't, I think, well, it'll be extremely difficult for us to say no to the next project um, and the next project and the next project. Um, and what that will do, which in, in and of itself is not bad, except that I believe that that will put a, uh, have a tremendously dampening effect, may even stop development in Ormond Beach on US-1. And I think it will also have a very negative impact on Ormond Crossings because at the end of the day, um, our land is more valuable because it's in Ormond Beach, but also because it already has our utilities. We have spent, we, the city of Ormond Beach, have spent millions of dollars to create those utility systems. And, and I just want to break in here on myself and say, I hate not being a good neighbor. You know, I want to be a good neighbor. I, wanna, I want this to work for everybody in the area. And there's a certain amount of truth to what, and, and I believe some of the statements that have been made relative to that there will be some benefit to Ormond. But I think the vast, vast benefit of this goes to Flagler County, and we get virtually nothing. We'll get impact fees, you know, when they hook up one time, and we'll get a 25% premium on the water and sewer that they consume. So uh, my position really hasn't changed. I know, uh, I know all three of the owners. I, I've known them for years. They're great human beings, uh, great contributors. And of course, I've known Mr. Sweet for years. Uh, no quarrel at all with the people involved. The, um, I also asked Ms. Van Eckert um, w it, whether or not this project had looked at Ormond Beach, and she, I, I believe her answer was no, it really, it really hadn't, and I said why not, and it turns out that the owner of um, Discovery World Furniture actually lives in Flagler County in the hammock. This company is in Sanford now, and so he wants to relocate um, to Flagler County. So there really was never, we really, I don't believe we really ever had a fair shot, and I, and I believe Mr. Rademacher will uh, confirm that they, they, never, they never actually spoke to Ormond Beach. So with that, I'll just say that uh, I'm, I will continue to be a no vote on this because I believe this is just the first step in multiple additional parcels that right now are not developable, getting our utilities becoming developed, and then stalling uh, development within our corporate limits. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Selby. Anyone else? <clears throat> Ms. Mayor, uh, I would like to make a couple points for clarification purposes. <clears throat> um, so I'm, the, uh, the staff report does a pretty good job of explaining what we're trying to do here, uh, just to serve uh, one one, one single use on the, on the property, which is the, the warehouse, the furniture, furniture warehouse, and that's the service area. Um, there are, on the site plan, on the last page of the site plan, it's attached as an exhibit. Uh, there are three parcels um, kind of cross-hatched uh, on US-1, which are not denoted with any particular kind of use, and I think that's what Mr. Sweet refer, uh, referred to earlier. Um, the original site plan uh, indicated there may be some alternative use for those. Um, but we may, may want to um, strengthen some of the wording in the restriction provision, which is in Section 6, just to um, uh, make certain that the only um, service connection that we're providing is for the, the warehouse. So this is what I'm going to propose if somebody would like to make an amendment, and then somebody can second that. So at paragraph 6.2, which is on page 3 of the agreement, <clears throat> Um, it is titled single customer and service area, no additional connections. Um, so it, it provides, the city agrees to provide water and wastewater services to the project site owner. And I'm gonna propose adding, but to and solely for use by the Discovery World Furniture Facility, period. Next sentence, no other person or entity shall be allowed to connect to the city's water and or wastewater lines without the prior written cons consent comma, and, and this is the other part of the amendment, in the sole and absolute discretion of the Ormond Beach City Commission. 
So that is intended to clearly indicate that um, the connection is for this one use, this one facility only, that the commission reserves the absolute discretion to allow or not allow additional uh, connections in the future. Now, in order for that to occur in the future, should the commission desire to do so, um, several things would have to occur. You'd have to um, expand the service boundary area uh, beyond the footprint that is provided for in this agreement. Um, the other thing uh, that we'll do as a second step in this process is to bring back an ordinance that actually establishes the service area based on the footprint that's in here. So you would need to essentially amend that in the future as well, uh, as well as establishing uh, um, uh, an ordinance uh, that provides for the water and wastewater rates to be, to be charged. So those are the next things in a sequence as it relates to this particular project, and that's what would occur in the future if you desired to expand beyond the boundaries of this particular agreement. Um, I will share with you that in earlier conversations with um, our friends at uh, Flagler County, we did express concern about the comprehensive development of the land in the southern portion of Flagler County, and, uh, and so that's why we're trying to limit uh, this agreement, this connection to this one particular use, reserving to the commission uh, the sole and absolute dis discretion uh, to determine whether or not if at all to do anything further in the future. So I just want to clarify that. So if I can get somebody to make a motion to mend, uh, and then second to that based on what I stated earlier, uh, that would help clarify what we're trying to do. Is there a motion to amend 2019-195? Can I ask, so on page three, we still, <clears throat> as I read 6.2, we're still the only ones that can give permission for the lines to be extended, right? Correct. The, okay. And what do, what do we want to add? Why, why would we not let them have the other two <clears throat> parcels? Okay. If what, what, what I want to do is I want to clarify a couple of points. So if you go to the very um, last page of Exhibit A to this contract, it, it, will, it will show, I think it's, I'm sorry, it's um it's two fifty seven online. Okay, I'm I'm reading from my project file. So this is the page. It's, it's actually the the first page it, of the um, actual site plan, so it'd be the third page from the end of the exhibit. So there there are three cross hatched parcels up here I'm pointing to. This is on US one. The original site plan indicated that these out parcels could be used for other uses. Um, our, um, what we're trying to do is to facil facilitate the connection solely for the warehouse, not these other parcels. Um, I wasn't made aware of these other parcels until late this afternoon. In discussions with uh, the attorney for the property uh, owner, he'd indicated that these out parcels will not be used for anything other than, I believe, landscaping and, and things of that nature. But to drive that point home in this agreement, I wanted, to, I wanted I'm suggesting that we amend 6.2 uh, <clears throat> by adding the following language to the end of that first sentence, and this is a language to add, but to and solely for use by and for Discovery World f uh, Furniture Facility. And then the second part of the amendment would be in the se second sentence, after the word consent, add in the sole and absolute discretion, and then it would continue of the Ormond Beach City Commission. So what that does is it clearly indicates that, you know, what, whatever is shown on this, on this exhibit, that the only connection point is going to be for the warehouse purpose only. And the commission reserves the absolute discretion um, to consider any additional future uh, changes to this agreement. So that's what we're trying to accomplish. I will make a motion to amend to exactly what our city attorney said in his verbiage. Sure. Is there a second? I'll second that for discussion purposes. Anybody wish to comment further or have any additional questions? Colby, please call the vote on the amendment. Commissioner Littleton. No. Commissioner Selby. 
Yes. Commissioner Kent. Yes. Commissioner Persis. No. Mayor Partington. Yes. And now uh, we are on the resolution as amended. Yes. All right. Anybody have additional questions or discussion on that? Colby, please call the vote. Commissioner Persis. Yes. Commissioner Littleton. No. Commissioner Selby. No. Commissioner Kent. Yes. Mayor Partington. Yes. And that brings us to the end of the consent agenda. Is there any commissioner who wishes to speak on any other consent agenda item? If not, we will move on to public hearings. I'll open the public hearings and ask the city clerk to read 9A by title, please. Ordinance number 2019-31, an ordinance amending paragraph C, official zoning map of section 2-01, Establishment of Zoning Districts and Official Zoning Map of Article 1, Establishment of Zoning Districts and Official Zoning Map of Chapter 2, District and General Regulations of the City of Ormond Beach Land Development Code by amending the official zoning map to rezone a certain parcel of real property totaling approximately 3.72 acres located at 99 Portland Street, south of Broadway Avenue, north of the existing stored facility, west of the unopened Flagler Road right-of-way, and east of the FEC railroad tracks, Volusia County parcel number 3136-01-70-0010 from B7 Highway Taurus Commercial to PBD Plan Business Development, authorizing revision of official zoning map, repealing all inconsistent ordinances or parts thereof, and setting forth an effective date. This is the second reading of ordinance number 2019-31, read by title only. Thank you. <clears throat> Colby, I have one card who is the attorney for the applicant, but... Um... I just need a motion in a second. I move approval of ordinance number 2019-31. Second. Second. Any additional questions? Colby, please call the vote. Commissioner Selby? Yes. Commissioner Kent? Yes. Commissioner Persis? Yes. Commissioner Littleton? Yes. Mayor Partington? <clears throat> yes. 9B. Ordinance number 2019-32, an ordinance authorizing the execution and issuance of a development order for a planned business development to be known as Store It, Boat, and RV Center Phase 2, authorizing the construction of a 106 plus or minus boat and recreational vehicle storage facility with associated site improvements to be located at 99 Portland Street, south of Broadway Avenue, north of the existing store at facility, west of the unopened Flagler Road right-of-way, and east of the FEC railroad tracks, Volusia County parcel number 3136-101-70-0010, establishing conditions and expirations of approval and setting forth an effective date. This is the second reading of ordinance number 2019-32, read by title only. Thank you. I still have the same card. I just need a motion and a second. I'd like to move uh, ordinance 2019-32. Second. Any discussion? Please call the vote. Commissioner Kent. Yes. Commissioner Persis. Yes. Commissioner Littleton. Yes. Commissioner Selby. Yes. Mayor Partington. Yes. And that brings us to 9C. Resolution number 2019-192, a resolution authorizing the execution and issuance of the first amended development order for a special exception removing the condition that security gates remain open between the hours of 6 a.m. and 7 p.m. for Reflections Village Patio Home Subdivision located south of West Granada Boulevard and west of Old Kings Road and being within the R4 Single Family Cluster and Townhouse Zoning District ratifying and confirming all prior approvals, providing for recordation, and setting forth an effective date. This is resolution number 2019-192, read by title only. Thank you. Colby, I'll ask Planning Director Steven Spraker to speak on this item. Good evening, Steven Spraker, Planning Director. This is a request to amend a 1995 conditional use permit, which is now called a special exception. The development order can contain conditions that restricted um, the hours of when the gates could be open and closed. The amendment before you seeks to give that power back to the HOA so they can determine when it's appropriate for the gates to be open and closed. Uh, we've had city staff review it. There are no objections to allowing the HOA to control the operations of the gate. It went to our planning board and was recommended approval with a 7-0 vote. And staff is also recommending approval. Thank you, Stephen. Any questions for Stephen? I have three cards. Uh, Joe James. Mayor, City Commissioners. I, I don't really have anything to add. I think it's clear what we're uh, attempting to do. 
Um, we did do a survey of the residents within the community and we got a, a majority approval to move forward with this. And the only other thing I want to say is that um, the catalyst for this is Ormond Central Development, which is going to be adjacent to our property across the, on Old Kings Road. And through the, the uh, special exception process for Ormond Central, Paul Holub agreed to pay the fee, the special exception fee and so on, uh, for this change. So um, we worked it out with Paul, and uh, so everything's good. Thank, Thank you. Susan Barfield. Hi, I'm Susan Barfield from Reflections Village. Um, I have a letter here from Stephen Spraker to a Charles Dewar on July 8, 2011, and it is in response to Mr. Dewar's question regarding the process on how to allow what we're doing here tonight. And Mr. Spraker's response, and he was a senior planner then, in 1995, the SPRC, which includes the fire and police departments, was concerned with access and timely response to the gated subdivision. That was 25 years ago. Fast forward 25 years to the gates we now have. Ours are light years ahead of what we had then. Everybody's gates were slow and cumbersome. We conducted those traffic counts, which showed no uptick in traffic even during the busy hours, uh, 7 to 8, 8, 12 to 1, and 5 to 6. Over a period of three days, in nine hours, there was a total of 20 inbound vehicles through the north gate. That's maybe two an hour. At the recent planning board meeting, a neighbor expressed, one of our homeowners expressed concern about stacking, but a solution has already been suggested, and it's very simple, really, because we're all in favor of it, and that is if and when it is determined that it is a busy time, that there's a busy time, homeowners will use the south gate. It, it won't be a problem. 25 years ago, we didn't have the threats that we have now. There wasn't the violence. There wasn't the rage that exists today. With the inevitability of Ormond Central being developed across the street, we, the owners of Reflections Village, the city planners, the planning board, and the developers of Ormond Central, Paul Holub and Lewis Heaster, all are in agreement that it is time to give the operation of the gates back to Reflections Village. Please give us our gates. Thank you and thank you for your service. Thank you. Tom, Tom Barfield. Good evening, I'm Tom Barfield, 29 Old Macon Drive. Uh, we're all familiar, I believe, with this, this uh, issue. Reflections Village has met the criteria uh, request by a majority of our homeowners, the traffic count, and the application filing. This is what the city had asked for. The commission has all of the relevant data, including a recommendation from city planning. Uh, Reflections Homeowners uh, Association respectfully requests that you cede control of the gates to the HOA. Uh, and we can assure you we're not going to do something crazy with it, but as was pointed out earlier, the uncertainty as to the development of Ormond Central, which is literally across our street, South Old Kings, being able to control the gates without having to come to City Hall, I think is, is the right thing for the HOA to have that control. Thank you. Thank you. I don't have any additional cards. Just need a motion. Move for approval resolution number 2019-192. Second. Any discussion? Colby, please call the vote. Commissioner Persis. Yes. Commissioner Littleton. Yes. Commissioner Selby. Yes. Commissioner Kent. Yes. Mayor Partington. Yes. That brings us to 9D. Resolution number 2019-193, a resolution authorizing the execution and issuance of a development order for a special exception regarding the Ocean Club Sportswear located at 712 South Atlantic Avenue within the B7 Highway Tourist Commercial Zoning District to allow outdoor activity to include the outdoor display of merchandise, establishing conditions and expiration date of approval, providing for recordation and setting forth an effective date. This is resolution number 2019-193, read by title only. Thank you. Uh, Steven Spraker, again, to speak briefly on this, this item. This is a request for outdoor activity at 712 South Atlantic Avenue, Ocean Club. This is the property we're considering. Um, they are seeking uh, outdoor storage of two areas, 32 square feet each. Uh, they came to this process through our code enforcement. Um, they are requesting 
the display of merchandise under certain conditions, which we put on all outdoor activity, including if they don't comply, they have the ability to lose it. Within your packet, there are two areas showing the site plan. Uh, the planning board did recommend it, um, six to zero, to allow the act outdoor activity under certain conditions, and staff is also recommending approval. Any questions for Stephen? Yeah, I, uh, one yourself. question. Mr. Spraker, will there be, uh, I think like we did at Lucky's, will they be, will they paint the ground or something yes, where with the 32 lots. square feet is? Okay. Yes. Okay, good. Thank you. Commissioner um, Persis. Stephen, what kind of um, items are, are they going to put outside? The planning board, they mentioned uh, mannequins, um, basically beachy display items to accent the gift shop. I'm not sure if the app applicant is here who can speak further to it. Mannequins? Yes. Okay. I do not have any cards on 9D. Just need a motion in a second. I move uh, resolution 2019-193. Is there a second? I'll pass the gavel and I'll make the second. Okay, we have a motion and a second on the floor. Um, who wants to talk first? Motion maker? I, uh, I don't find any problem with this. I'm, I support it. Yeah. Mr. Persis? Well, I have a, I, I'm just, I'm surprised to hear something like mannequins are gonna go out in front of it. I don't know what those are gonna look like. Um, I, I hesitate to approve something like this to put you know, stuff, knickknacks out in front of any kind of building. Um, Lucky's has fruit and food. I mean, that's not a mannequin. So um, I'm not I'm not in favor of mannequins. I think they could, I don't know what else they're gonna put out there. I, maybe I need a little bit more information. Anybody else? I'll say something. So uh, page two of, well, in the staff report, page two. So it gives a list of businesses we've done this with. And, you know, we've had one vote on the Julian so far, but it, we need a second vote. And I haven't had a look of what, you know, you know what Lowe's puts out, puts out mulch, that type of thing. The, the kayaks are kayaks, you know, Perrine, you know, Lucky's is food. I don't have a view of what mannequins and possibly clothes look like so i'm hesitant to approve this without seeing something you know positive with it so far okay mr mayor deputy mayor uh if the applicant's here can we ask him what you know is this going to look like what he has in other places or what he's planning to put there i don't see anybody coming forward Stephen, was the applicant here or thought they were? I, I do not see him. I know uh, Mr. the property owner has had health issues, um, so I'm not sure if that's something that's keeping him from attending tonight. So, I, I just no, I, I just want to say I'm just not in favor of putting something like that outside something on A1A. One of our, you know, A1A is the bright street you know, that runs you know, north and south up our coast. And I just think in Ormond Beach, it should look great. And I don't know that mannequins are gonna make us look great unless there's some kind of really snazzy mannequins that, that everybody would think are gorgeous. It just sounds like it might be something where they're promoting beach apparel or something like that. And so I would not be in favor of that. Right, anybody else? I'll take a crack at it. And those of you that know me probably know a lot of what I'm getting ready to say. Um, Commissioner Persis, uh, there's not a snazzy enough mannequin for me. <laughs> there's not, there's, there's, there's just not one available. And when I look at this list, I mean, Lowe's is so far back, you can't see what they have. It makes sense for them to have mulch outside and lawnmowers and grills. And then I look at you know, it's, it's funny because there's a, a company here or there's uh, one of the companies, the use is curb appeal. <laughs> and that's exactly what I'm thinking about. I don't ever want Ormond to look like sister cities next door to Ormond. 
and my fear is that uh, we are on a slippery slope. I did not approve the Ocean Club. I was a no vote on that uh, for this for this very reason. Um, this Commissioner Persis, you bring up a great point. This is a one a. I mean, goodness gracious, we have been spending countless hours, staff hours, elected official hours, money on beautifying and enhancing our area and to allow a business owner to put any type of outdoor storage like this, um, I just think goes against what we're, um, what we're trying to do. So I'm a, I'm a, and you mentioned Lucky's Market, you know, um, yeah, it's on, it's on Granada Boulevard. You have a hard time seeing what Lucky's has on display from Granada Boulevard. You have to pull into their establishment and then see the pineapples or the watermelon that are for sale outside. Um, it's just comparing for pun intended apples to oranges. Uh, so I'm, I'm a no on this. Would anybody like a second bite at the apple? No, I just, Commissioner Persons? Yeah. I just want to say I know in OB Life series we talked about you know we want to keep our city charming and um, and I listened to so many people because I was able to attend every one of those meetings and I just don't believe the people of Ormond Beach would would really enjoy seeing things like that outside okay not seeing anybody else city clerk we have a motion and a second would you please call the vote Commissioner Littleton no Commissioner Selby? Yes. Commissioner Persis? No. Mayor Partington? Yes. Deputy Mayor Kent? No. And we will close the public hearings and move to 10A. Ordinance number 2019-16, an ordinance approving the final plat for the Security First at Ormond Crossing subdivision, a planned mixed-use development, establishing conditions and expiration date of approval and setting forth an effective date. This is the third and final reading of ordinance number 2019-16, read by title only. <clears throat> Thank you, Colby. I do not have any cards on 10A. Just need a motion and a second. I move approval of ordinance number 2019-16. Second. Any discussion? Uh, yeah, I just had a Commissioner question. Selby. Is there, can somebody just explain, you know, why the area, do you have any idea why this, what the area that is being excluded or modified, why they said it could be modified? So they're in their discussions with the St. John's River Water Management District. Um, the initial opinion was that area, that acreage of the, of the wetlands identified would need to be in a conservation easement. Um, in further discussions, it does not need to be in a conservation easement at this time. It doesn't take away the fact they're wetlands. There may be future development, which may or may not impact it. So they're trying to keep at least the options open. And then, of course, they'll have to go back to St. John's for whatever development happens in the future. So they didn't want it on the plat as a conservation easement at this time. Any other questions or discussion? Colby, please call the vote. Commissioner Selby? Yes. Commissioner Kent? Yes. Commissioner Persis? Yes. Commissioner Littleton? Yes. Mayor Partington? Yes. 11A. Resolution number 2019-194, a resolution authorizing the execution of a memorandum of understanding between the city and the Ormond Beach Historical Society for a Volusia County Echo Grant for the McDonald House at 38 East Granada Boulevard and setting forth an effective date. This is resolution number 2019-194, read by title only. Thank you, Colby. Uh, we'll ask Planning Director Stephen Spraker to speak on this item as well. This is a request regarding the McDonald House at 38 East Granada Boulevard. There's really two actions that we're seeking. One is authorization from the city commission to allow the city to be the applicant in the Volusia County Echo Grant. Part of their requirements is that unless a nonprofit group had a long-term lease in place, they cannot be the applicant. So the only mechanism to get to the Echo Grant would for the city of Ormond Beach to be the applicant. Um, the second part of what we're seeking is a memorandum of understanding. The Ormond Beach Historic Society um, is offering a $1,000 donation towards that ECHO grant. Um, and what that does, it allows um, the leverage of, of monies and funds from different sources. Um, so we can take that $100,000 donation, the city of Ormond Beach can match it through land value, previously spent cash and a little bit of cash, and then we can come up with uh, an ECHO award for $200,000. 
So now we have $305,000 and some change for the exterior improvements. Um, and then in the next uh, fiscal year, there are CR CRA funds budgeted for the exterior renovations. So we've, we've been able to partner and pool the funds to try to do the exterior renovations. Um, there are longer range um, goals and phases to the interior, which the Historic Society seeks to get ECHO grants in the future for that. So there are, there's kind of a, a vision of how to um, renovate and restore the McDonald House. So uh, that's the plan, and Historic Society is here to address the commission. Thank you. Yep, I do have a card from Bonda Garrison, the Historical Society president. If anybody has any questions for her, she's available. Uh, just need a motion and a second. Move approval. Second. Any discussion? Yes. Commissioner Selby. Um, so I guess I'm just, I want to, I get the, uh, I get the applying for the uh, ECHO grant. I like all that. I have a little concern about are we obligating ourselves now in city commission to budget that four hundred thousand dollars in twenty twenty one, which is next fiscal year, not the current fiscal year. The commission can't obligate a future commission, right. so, so I just so wanna that's a pending you'd have to reapprove that. That's just an out year budget. And, and also the work this is for exterior renovation, so work could happen right away right with as soon as that money is received yeah we wouldn't get that money until after sides. july 1st i don't believe probably closer to october so right so the goal would be to basically start the the bidding process <clears throat> and hopefully be starting in october of 2021 okay and so then the i mean i'm sure you will i mean obviously this is part of the plan to maybe get the whole seven hundred thousand. but if that didn't come together then Right. The, and the ECHO grant application, that would be very clear, right? Yes, absolutely. Okay. All right. Very good. Yeah, the ECHO grant comes back to you for <coughs> approval as well. Upon okay. award. And, and I just want to say, I think this is fantastic. I appreciate the Historical Society stepping up and doing this, providing that $100,000. I was a little surprised that we valued the land at only $50,000. Where did that value come from? That seems... That's the maximum amount that we can use towards the grant. Oh, okay. the, the, the so for phrase value is obviously much higher. So that's that. that's the maximum we can use it in the grant formula. Got it. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions, Deputy Mayor Kent? Oh, just a comment, and I uh, just want the commission to know I I met yesterday with um, the current president and the incoming president, and we had a lovely meeting. And um, thank you very much for your time, Commissioner Persis. Yes, I just want to tell Bonda, um, I'm just so pleased with everything you're doing to help the um, McDonald House, and I know you've worked really, really hard, so it looks like this is all going to come together, so I'm proud of you. Colby, please call the vote. Commissioner Kent. Yes. Commissioner Persis. Yes. Commissioner Littleton. Yes. Commissioner Selby. Yes. Mayor Partington. Yes, and that brings us to item number 12. Reports, suggestions, and requests, and tonight we start with City Manager Joyce Shanahan. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, your next meeting is scheduled for November 5th. Um, we plan to have a 5.30 workshop on the health care plan update. We do that, tr try to do that, you know, at least twice a year, sometimes uh, more than that. So um, that's a planned workshop for November 5th. I would also like to tell you that we will be... Um, putting the banners up for our hometown heroes and they will be up effective uh, November 1st. If you recall that we have a partnership with Halifax Health to recognize our veterans and uh, individual people in the community submitted uh, loved ones that were um, uh, in the military currently or previously in the military. I think we have a total of 96 banners. Um, we will be putting them up on the bridge, so we will have a sort of ribbon-cutting ceremony on um, Friday, November 1st at like 7.30 uh, with you all and um, uh, Norman Strong to just recognize the official um, opening of that. They will be displayed for the full month of November, and then uh, we'll continue that for at least the next five years with the assistance of Halifax Health. On... Um, also on Friday, November 1st, um, our Movies on the Halifax will feature Star Wars. 
Um, one of our very own, uh, Stefan Sibley, uh, participates in a um, volunteer group that dresses up like the Star Wars characters and they visit local children's hospital um, all, over, all over Central Florida and they take that very, very seriously. So it's a troop number, but I can't recall what it, what it is, but they will be actually here for that and I'm sure that'll be a big draw for all the children because it's a wildly popular thing when they do it um, elsewhere. It's all volunteer work that he and his um, troop does and they raise lots of money for children's charity for that. Uh, you know, I have a whole list of um, project updates I'm happy to read to you. Um, otherwise, you can ask me any questions or I would say good night. Thank you very much. For the city manager. Thank you. Thank you. Assistant City Manager Claire Whitley. No comments. Thank you. Good night. And City Attorney Randy Hayes. No, sir. I think I've confused you enough tonight. Good night. <laughs> tonight we start with Commissioner Littleton. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, first thing I want to say is it's good to be back, but also this weekend Prince of Peace held Oktoberfest, and I can tell you Friday and Saturday night that was the place to be in all of Volusia County. I mean, we they killed it. I helped with parking three days, which is always fun, but that was the place to be, and I'm I'm happy staff and the police department and fire uh, work with Prince of Peace to make it such a great Ormond tradition. Uh, Yesterday at the round table, Mayor, I want to thank you for your comments about the sales tax. And uh, without getting into it, I agree with a lot of your sentiments. And uh, a third thing that came up, so with 9D, I was waiting for the applicant to convince me to allow them to have outdoor storage, and they weren't here. And this thought has been coming up in my mind recently, with, especially with the last change order from uh, the water tower incident. Again, the vendors weren't here. And for now on, for staff, if, you could, if someone has an agenda item, could we make sure that the applicant gets here? Because I would like to see their, hear their side of the story. And if not, you know, they get a no vote, but not, not per, per se, but... I would just like to hear their side of the story also and maybe just emphasize to them that it's important to come here if they have business before us. Thank you. And with that, I'll say good night. Commissioner Selby. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I, um, I hadn't planned on speaking much, but I would like to respond to a couple of comments that came up in, uh, in the open mic time. Um, and also, uh, Ms. Shanahan and I, and also Gabe Menendez, uh, attended the um, Ormond by the Sea Association um, public gathering on <laughs> Sunday. And at that meeting, I, I, I think it's important to share with you all that uh, Mr. Nutt, who spoke um, at the podium tonight and also last week or la at our last meeting, he stated that. Um, uh, in his opinion, that Ormond by the Sea is the best place in the entire United States of America to have septic tanks, and um, that there was that that he was convinced of that. Um, and then tonight, uh, Ms. Hakim, I just wrote down some things. I'm, I'm not sure I'm quoting her, but she said um, she used the phrase "unwanted development," that we're pushing people out of their homes and that people are worried. And I guess my, my only comment to all that is that, um, is that the city staff intends to do um, public information sessions, town halls. Um, the first one, I'll let, I'll let you know, Ms. Shanahan uh, say when that is, uh, but it is planned before the end of the year and it'll be a panel of experts and there'll be a lot of information shared. And I, I, I think it's totally appropriate that we haven't had a town hall meeting yet in light of the fact that it was only 11 days ago that we formally adopted the budget that allocated the money to actually move forward with this uh, design and permitting of phase one. And uh, so, and then the other thing I wanted to say was that um, last week, the end of last week, my son and I toured uh, our wastewater treatment plant 
with uh, Mr. Menendez and with uh, Al Waite, who is the uh, our fairly new hire, um, I think within the last year, who runs the wastewater treatment plant. And uh, it was very interesting. And um, uh, it's an, an incredibly well-run facility uh, that does everything that we would want it to do and then some. And um, it's in very good hands, as is our entire utilities department. And with that, I'll say good night. Thank you. <clears throat> Commissioner Selby and Deputy Mayor Kent. All right. To the commission and to Ms. Shanahan, I'm requesting that we either have a discussion item or probably more appropriately a, a workshop to discuss the ch church we bought on Beach Street. Uh, we need to make a decision, I feel. And um, put our heads together, I think that we can come up with a, a pretty great decision, but it's it's prime real estate. It's uh, centrally located, but we've not had that time to sit down and, and hash this out and talk about it. And I'm, I'd like to get that ball rolling, so that's what I'm doing tonight. Um, just two more items to, to Mr. Hanoush, who wants us to put term limits uh, on the election. I would tell you that uh, we have had many residents tell us that we already have term limits every two years. It's called election day. And if you don't like the job we're doing, you can put new people in these seats. And if you like the job we're doing, you can keep us here. If we still want to do the job. And, uh, you know, Orm is a unique place. And um, I tend to agree with that. We have term limits. Every two years we have elections, and the term limit is on election day. Last but not least, our chief of police, Chief Godfrey, is here. And this community, this city is so special that, yes, there's a nationally recognized program called D.A.R.E. And it works on teaching youngsters in the elementary school to make the right decision and to stay away from drugs and alcohol and tobacco and kids write an essay and in fifth grade and um, you know they're they're able to to pledge their support for a healthy lifestyle and our chief realized that there's nothing for the middle school students and our police department with the leadership of chief godfrey created the 5-0 Club. And the 5-0 Club is, is only in one place in the world, and it's in Ormond Beach, Florida. And Chief Godfrey and a team of his officers were out there last week. There will be some officers there tomorrow. They come out for five weeks, and they meet with a group of students, 6th, 7th, and 8th graders. They provide them lunch, so they get them happy with food, and they provide a speaker. Um, could be a local businesswoman or man. Um, last week it was our own police force. But these are great things that are happening and the partnership between Ormond Beach, the city of Ormond Beach and Volusia County Schools is real and it's, it's good and it's healthy and it's wholesome and it's positive and it gives kids at that age level an opportunity to meet with adults they normally wouldn't meet with and hear their story and ask them questions and they're right there and um, you know in the first person and they're able to uh, shake their hand and it's it's really good stuff and and chief I commend you publicly tonight for being the brainchild of that program and making sure it's starting uh, a alive and well again in Ormond Beach Middle School. So thank you very much. Have a nice evening. Commissioner Persis. Good evening, everyone. Um, first of all, just to uh, piggyback on what Deputy Mayor Kent was saying about Volusia County Schools, um, I am very proud to announce that our own Osceola Elementary School is going to start a biodegradable initiative, which will be launching October 21st. Um, right there at that school. And they're gonna be using biodegradable trays. And you may, may say, what is a biodegradable tray? And it's a product that's engineered to break down safely and quickly into raw material and disappear into the environment. 
So what does this mean for the students at Osceola Elementary? It means no more styrofoam trays, yay. No more straws, yay. Food items will be served directly on the new trays and students will grab individual utensils from a new dispenser. So the benefits of this program are positive impact on the environment, less plastic being hauled off to a landfill, made from renewable plants and various vegetable oils, and there will be no toxins used in the process or in the final product. And this is our first school that's starting that. And I want to thank my husband, who actually just walked in, because he is right now the chairman of the school board, and he worked with that school. To, and we tried, we're going to try to try it at um, Osceola, and hopefully it's going to generate out to all the schools in Volusia County. So thank you, Mr. Persis, for that. Um, I also want to let all of you know, Many of you know about um, A-plus tutoring right here in Ormond Beach. Muffy Shamfro, who is the owner of A-plus tutoring, just celebrated 25 years of that school. And that school has helped you know, children and adults alike, languages, reading, math, anything they need help in. Um, she has been there with her great teachers to help our community. So I just wanted to mention that. And then finally, I received, along with I know all the other commissioners, um, the Quality Cities magazine. And I was just so proud to see our mayor featured in there, um, just talking about what a great job the mayor and our city did with OB Life and how we really reached out and got our community together. And I really believe that's what it's all about, what we all do. So thank you all for listening and have a good evening. <clears throat> Commissioner Persis, and the only thing I wanted to touch on was the uh, fantastic State of the City address that we had. Uh, each of you participated and made that a uh, great event. It was a new venue, but it went very well, and uh, Joyce staff did a great job putting that all together. Dave Pizzo, uh, working with them, did an amazing job, and there's just so many wonderful things happening in the city of Ormond Beach right now. It's uh, when you look at the brochure for the state of the city, it kind of blows your mind how many great uh, things are going on. I, I had mentioned a few months ago that these things would start happening, start coming, and, and they are, and people are excited about it, and so it's a wonderful time to be an Ormond Beach resident. And with that, we will say good night. <laughs>